Today, we're gonna to be making Mordor. I'm running an upcoming Middle Earth tournament, so I need heaps of boards. For this one, I really wanted to integrate some of the mechanics in Middle Earth that you don't see that often on other boards, specifically climbing and jumping. Now, I also wanted this board to be relatively versatile. I want to be able to dress it differently so that I can use it for other games such as 40,000 if I put some sci-fi buildings on it. To start this project, I begun by watching the movie. There's one scene where the Last Alliance defeats Sauron in Mordor, and that's what I wanted this board to represent. Also, I jumped into the Weta workshops from script to screen of Middle Earth book, and had a page through some of the Mordor sections. After this, I was ready to begin. The first step was taking EVA foam, high density insulation foam, you see it in every terrain making tutorial, got it from my local hardware store, and I glued that down to a bit of MDF board. When I buy my PVA glue, I buy it in bulk. One of these four liter tubs costs $26, whereas a 500 ml bottle costs 13. So it just makes sense to buy a big one and then pour it into the small ones. I weighed it down after I put the glue on because sometimes it can expand and deform. I was making this board into four 2x2 two two sections to make one 4x4 four four board. After these pieces were put down and being ready to dry, I jumped onto my bandsaw and I started cutting out some bases that terrain pieces and large rocks are going to go on. Once I had these bases, I needed to make some rocks. Now, my method for this is taking a metal ruler, it could be any blunt object, um, and just start dragging it along the foam, putting lots of pressure in it, and that causes the foam to peel up in this really interesting way. I just repeat this process multiple times, and then I'll go with my fingers and I'll pick off all the little small dangly bits. This is an easy way to shape rocks in a really natural looking way, and definitely my favorite method for doing it. It was important to me that this board utilize the depth that the foam gave it. I wanted it to have multiple levels. So I decided I'd be adding a ravine in. This wasn't something that I'd really planned on doing, but after putting the foam down, I really liked the idea. To do this was a little bit of work because I'd already glued it down, but with a nice sharp razor and a steel ruler, I was able to pry out a large section that would become my ravine. Now, after I had this section made, I was ready to start forming it. So I went in with my ruler again to shape the sides so they looked all nice and rocky. And I wanted the ravine to have a gradual entrance so that models could meet and fight in there. To do this, I cracked out my razor blade and I started just shaving it down slowly, trying to make it nice and smooth going in. Now, while I was doing this, realized that it'd be really easy to slip and cut my hand. So I put on a glove. There's a big trope on YouTube of don't do this at home, ha ha ha. But really, it's quite serious. If I had hit my hand, um, I wouldn't have been able to get any of my boards done for my tournament. So even though the glove never ended up being important because I didn't scratch it or cut it at all, it was always worth mitigating that risk. It's really important to me that I avoid wobbly model syndrome. That's when a model doesn't really stay where you put it. So I chose some top heavy metal models that would be the most at risk of falling over on a slant. And I used them and tried to balance them on this section that I was cutting. And I made sure that they were stable everywhere before moving on. If there was a spot where they fall over, well, I took my knife, I went back in and I smoothed it out just a little bit more. One of the main pieces of terrain that I built for this board was this large cliff-like section. I started by roughing it in using the bandsaw, cutting a slant, and then I went in with my razor and I cut more of a slant into it. Now, I really wanted to kind of recreate that scene in 300 where the sponge kick all the Persians off the edge, and I wanted that to happen on this terrain piece. So I made a large cliff, and it looks like an attractive place to put archers, but I'm hoping someone will put them there, and then someone else will come and kick them off the edge. To do this, again, I went back to my wobbly model test, 
put my models on, and until they were stable everywhere, I didn't stop cutting. Once it was all ready, I carved the edges with my ruler again, making it look all rocky. After that, I put the piece down onto an MDF base and drew a circle around it, cut that piece out with the A lot of terrain boards that I see are perfectly flat. Now that makes sense because it's a lot easier to make it that way. However, it's not how things look in real life. There's almost no section of land that big that is perfectly flat. So I wanted to make it a bit more ripply. To do that, I took it outside and I lit my blowtorch up. All I did was I gently waved my blowtorch across the top in certain sections and that just made enough texture that the land looked natural. Now, obviously the fumes for this are really bad, which is why I did it outside and why I was wearing a mask while I did it. Right. After that was done, I moved back to my frame pieces. I want to show you this one specifically because it shows something that I was thinking of when I made the rest of them. I took a few big rocks that I'd carved and I placed them all down. But after that, I took a monster sized base and I made sure that it would be able to fit through all of the gaps. I thought this would be a really fun thing to do for the game and something you don't see that much where the gap is just perfectly the right size that one monster can block it all up. This next step is really important. It's worth listening to if you're planning on using our EVA foam. EVA foam melts when you hit it with spray paint, so we need to seal it. To do that, I just covered it in a few thin coats of PVA. I did probably three or four watered down coats before I was confident that I wouldn't be melting all my hard work. After that was dry, I added a layer of gravel to certain parts. This was just gravel that I found in the garden mixed with some sand from a playpen somewhere. Uh, and it was deliberately rocky because that's what it's like in Mordor. Now before I started painting, I did one more spray over of watered down PVA glue over all of the texture that I added. This is the kind of stuff that really easily gets knocked off while playing. That's going to be part of the board's life, but I wanted to try to avoid it as much as possible, so I sealed everything down as strongly as I could. That took ages to dry, but eventually when it was ready, I took the whole board outside. Here, I sprayed it with three different colors. I had a brown, a black, and a gray. I sprayed these around in kind of a mismatch of natural looking but somewhat random shapes until there was a nice blend of the three. I was really really happy with how this turned out and it was super easy to do. Now the last step for painting is just doing a grey dry brush over everything. This ties those three colours together, reduces the separation, makes it look a bit more natural and it really accurately resembles the colours that I saw when I was looking at my mortal source material. Now as you can see the painting of this board was super quick, I was able to smash it out in just over an hour. In fact this whole board took me probably about a day and a half when you look at the glue drying time. So it was really nice and easy and it looks really, really good in the end. All right, here's it all dried up on display. I was really happy with how this board turned out. One thing that I like a lot about it is how versatile it can be. If I just change these terrain pieces into anything else, it can work for any game I want. Also, I really like that for the game I built it for, Middle Earth, it integrates a lot of really, really interesting in-game mechanics. I think that's a very important thing to think about when you're designing a board for any game is how it's going to impact the game. You want to bring something that most boards don't to make it unique and exciting to play on. Now this has been the journey of me painting my mortal board. If you want to see this in use, I will have a battle report where Dale fights against Moria on this board. So make sure you check that out and until next time, have a good one.